How's it going, Phone Lab? It's Root Junkie here, and today we're going to be talking about these right here, combination files. So we're going to talk a little bit about what they are, what they contain, some information on how to use them. Um, just, just try to give you some informative information about combination files. So combination files are for Samsung devices only. That's the only place I've seen them is strictly for Samsung. They are proprietary files, so they're files from Samsung directly. Um, they are designed by them and not really distributed, but leaked by, by Samsung. So um, what I want to do is just kind of talk to you a little bit about them. You can actually get combination files online. You can Google search for combination files and find them online. A lot of sites ask you to pay for them. At Phone Lab, you can get them in our file repository. You can also get them with a Z3X box. There's a ton of them linked in their file repository. So go to the Z3X box section and you'll see how to access combination files through Z3X box. So we're going to talk about them. So actually I've got a couple things extracted. So there's a lot of stock firmware here, which is from Samsung or Samsung Mobile. You can get a lot of good firmware from there. Um, and I've gone ahead and extracted a couple of them just so we can compare and look a little bit at what is different about them. So here's PD1 images for my Note 4. We're going to open those up. And if you extract the firmware file, which is PD1 right here, the uh, TAR MD5, you're ending up with all of these images. So these are pretty standard. I mean, you have a boot, which is your bootloader, basically um, boot image, which is like your kernel, what boots up at first, cache, modems, radios, which is like your cellular sig signal stuff, um, recovery, obviously, and then some some different uh, partitions here, system image and a trust zone image, um, which has to do with security for your bootloader. So this is basically the files of standard firmware. Okay, so if you come into a combination file. Right here, I took this this right here, this combination folder, and I extracted it in here. We can take a look at what is entailed in here. So you can see a lot of the exact same files. But the things I guess I would point out to you is the size of the system image is much smaller. And you're going to see why when we flash this to my Note 4. And then it also contains two extra files. So we have persist data and persist image. Um, so those are extra. Those are not contained in... Um, the normal firmware images, okay? So just be aware of that. Now this Note 4 is the Verizon variant VZW you can see right here. Um, and so this combination firmware works for the Note 4 on Verizon. So there's some good things to point out about um, combination files. So it does have a build number right there. You can see it. And most of the time um, you can't like downgrade with it too, too well. Um, so if you flash this combination file, you need to flash a firmware later to remove the combination file and get stock firmware back that's above PB1. At least that's best practice. So I've got PD1, so that should work out fine when we need to reflash this thing. All right. So I kind of went over that. No, let me show you also just the, the, the difference here. So see small system image. It's not a big file. And then just so you can see what a normal stock system image looks like. There you go. It's like almost four gigs where the other one was about a half, half a gig. So there's, there's some big differences there in what we're flashing because it's not a fully functional system when you flash a combination file. All right, so we've gone over that. Let's, um, let's go ahead and flash this to my Note 4. All right, so here we are on the device. We're going to go ahead and um, just power it up. You can see that it does have a lock screen on it. Um, there are some cool things you can actually do with combination files um, to get ADB turned on. You can actually take the boot image out of the combination file and just flash it. The device won't fully boot up maybe, um, but you'll still have a working ADB, which is one of the reasons we use combination files. But I'm going to flash the full thing just to show it to you. So we're going to go ahead and power off the device, and we got to get into download mode. So to get into download mode is standard on Samsung. We're just going to go ahead and hold volume down, home, and then power to boot into download mode. And there are some things you're going to want to note. So once you see the screen, hit continue, which volume up. So you're going to want to come up here in the top, in the very top, and just check out what you have because it actually tells you some excellent information. Um, it tells you the um, product, so what, what device you're on. It tells you if you're a reactivation lock or FRP lock. And then if you boot into stock recovery on Samsung, it'll also tell you what Android version you're currently on. So those are good things to just be aware of. Okay? So... Um, we're going to go ahead, we've got this in here, we're in download mode, we're going to go ahead and connect it up to my computer. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. 
there we go. It is plugged in. So let's go over to my computer and let's flash some firmware, some combination files. So we're going to go into Odin. I'm uh, going to launch Odin 3.10. At least that's what I'm going to use here. And then we're going to go ahead and just go to AP. Uh, now, if you have newer Samsung devices, you'll be using all those places. But for combination file, we don't need to. So we're just going to go click on the combination file. Yeah, so if you have a newer Samsung devices, you have to use the, the, the bootloader, the AP, um, the CP, and the CSC, and you have to put each one of them in. But since this is an older Samsung phone, we don't need to do all of that. So the first thing it is, it just checks the combination file to make sure the MD5 is successful and it's a good match, and it's, then it says leaving. So we're good. So you can see your COM port. You know, this is pretty standard for flashing. Let's go ahead and start. And it looks like it's going to fully function. So this flash shouldn't take that long because of the fact that it, the system image is very small. It's only half a gig. Whereas, like I said, on a full firmware flash, we're going to be shooting at around, um, what, what am I saying here, about three and a half gigs for a firmware or for a system image. The other thing that this does is, if you didn't notice in the combination file, is it repartitions the phone. There's a PIT file contained in this uh, combination firmware. So it does get repartitioned during this process. Mm -hmm. So you can see it actually finished already. And this does wipe data if you do a full combination flash. The data on the phone will be gone, mm -hmm. um, non-recoverable. But you can see what it's going to do here, Samsung again. But this next screen is probably going to throw you because you're going to be like, what is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, check that out. We're actually done on the computer here. And I just wanted to show you this. So this is it, factory binary. This is combination firmware. And this can actually do quite a lot. Um, and I honestly don't even know all of its capabilities at this point. Um, something I'm kind of discovering as we here at Phone Lab investigate this a little bit more. But one of the main things that it does do is let me go ahead and plug it back in. And let me just open up terminal back on my computer. And we're going to run a quick little command here ADB devices and you can see we have ADB devices and I didn't do anything to this phone I haven't turned on developer options nothing defaultly combination firmware comes with ADB functioning you don't have to turn anything on right from boot pretty interesting all right we're gonna be done on my computer here so let me just show you combination firmware show you what is a little bit about it so you can get a feel for what this offers so we can come in here and you can see the apps are very bare bones. They're mainly for testing the device. Um, you know, this is, this is supposed to be for Samsung to use it, not for everyday user to use it. So there's some different functionality and some different things you can do in it. But we can also go into settings. And I guess this is where it could become very valuable on certain phones. You can come in here to About Phone. Tap on your build number. Turn on Developer Options right there. And then if you have an OEM unlock button, you can turn that on. Um, and that's kind of critical. Also, if you have um, FRP lock device, now you can use a box like Z3X or Octoplus, and you should be able to remove, because ADB is functional, you should be able to remove FRP slash reactivation lock with the box very simply and very easily because we have a combination file booted and we have uh, ADB functional. That'll remove it, then you can flash back stock firmware and you'll have a functional device. So there's a lot you can do with it. Like I said, I recommend checking it out, playing around with it a little bit and get familiar. So once you've got that done, you've done whatever you need to do with the combination firmware, we're going to go ahead and unplug this. And we're going to go ahead and kill it. So if you just hold power, it'll, it'll reboot. So hold volume up and down and power, or I'm sorry, power, home and volume down. You can get back into the firmware flashing screen, and there it is. Um, and you can just see, again, you can see some information up there along the top. And then if you want to flash this thing back to stock firmware, um, you can sometimes just do the stock firmware with Odin. That's fine. I recommend getting the PIT file and actually having the PIT file before you flash this, because what happens is sometimes the firmware will not flash without repartitioning because the combination file partitioned. So be prepared for that. Get the PIT file loaded into Odin. Get the firmware loaded in. You should flash it back, and you'll be right back and functioning uh, fully with the Note 4 on stock firmware or any device, Samsung device you're using. So, guys, there's you go. There's a little bit of information about 
combination files and what they look like, a little bit how to use them. And I know they can do a lot more like, I'm pretty sure that you can actually turn off on if you reset knocks, if you've tripped knocks on your device with a combination file. That's some things we're gonna be trying to investigate here more at Phone Lab. There you go, that's gonna wrap it up. I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, check out some videos right below and learn quite a bit more about combination files. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Root Junkie out.